Okay, in this section, you'll discover how to identify edge cases that the pre-made model could not handle, and then learn how to retrain the model to account for such situations. Let's take a look at the performance of your first approach. Here, you can see the predictions of spam for the sentences on the slide. In the last section, you set the threshold for spam to be at 75% or greater. So for all these legitimate comments, none are marked as spam. So far, so good. These are known as true negatives. However, after getting a few users to try the system, you'll likely find some legitimate comments that are marked as spam as shown. These are known as false positives. As you can see, all of these comments have a score over 75%, leading them to be marked as spam, even though they're genuine questions. Now, one trivial thing you may try and do at this point is to increase the confidence threshold of the spam classification to be over 98.5%. That way, all of the sentences shown here would be classified as non-spam and the ones from before would still be classified correctly too. But let's check some more examples. Now here we have some true positives. These are spam comments that were correctly identified as spam. Now, if you had not changed the threshold in the prior section, these would have been classified as intended. However, because you changed the threshold to 98.5% in the prior section, you can now see that two of these are now treated as non-spam, which is incorrect. Now, you could try to lower this to 96%, but if you did that, then one comment from the previous section would be misclassified. But maybe that's acceptable, so let's continue. So finally, you can check the false negatives. These are spam comments that were allowed to be posted. Looking at the classification percentages here, there's nothing you can do by changing the spam threshold alone without making many of the other prior situations be misclassified too, given that the lowest confidence here is around 7%. The only thing left to do at this point is to retrain the model to account for new edge cases you discovered so it gets better at predicting such situations. Now, the pre-made model you used before was actually generated using TensorFlow's model maker, which is written in Python, as you've seen in prior chapters. So you shall once again use a collab, but this time use it to retrain the model before converting and saving the model to the TensorFlow.js format to then use in your web app. So first, head back to collab.research.google.com and create a new collab notebook as shown. You should now have a blank collab to start editing once it loads like this. Next, connect to a hosted runtime, just like before, to start a server with TensorFlow and Python pre-installed by clicking on the connect button at the top right and choosing connect to hosted runtime. After a few moments, you should see the RAM and disk usage appear to indicate a successful connection. Next, it's time to install Model Maker. Go to the first cell and type the code as shown, noting to start with an exclamation mark to indicate this is to be executed on the command line and is not a Python statement. Execute the cell by pressing the play button and wait for the TF Lite model maker to be installed as shown. Great, now that model maker is installed, add a new cell to add some new code to execute. In the new cell, add the following code. Again, even if you're not a Python programmer, you can see that all these lines do is import a whole bunch of useful utilities and the model maker functions that are needed to set up the spam classifier model. At the very end, you ensure that the TensorFlow version is version 2, which is required for ModelMaker to work correctly. If it's not, you can log an error message. Once copied, go ahead and use the play button to execute this code and then move on to the next step. OK, next, you want to grab some new training data to train your model with. For your convenience, I've hosted data in a CSV file, meaning data is separated by commas. And this contains both the original training data used to train the model, along with the extra examples at the end to account for the edge cases that failed as we discussed earlier. Now a preview of the contents of the file is shown on the slide. Essentially, it's just a lowercase sentence with punctuation removed, followed by a comma, and then the classification of true or false, indicating if the sentence was spam or not. There are 1,340 example sentences in this file. At this point, go ahead and add a new cell block and add the above line of code to download the CSV file hosted with this new training data. This uses the tf.keras.utils.get underscore file function to grab a remote file and store it locally on the disk of this server. In this case, it will store it with the file name of comment-spam-extras.csv locally on the server once downloaded. As this is not a zip file, extract is set to false. Execute the cell block and then continue. So ModelMaker can train models from simple CSV files like the one you just downloaded. You just need to specify which columns hold the text and which hold the labels, and you'll see how to do that in later steps. 
It should be noted that when you're using Model Maker, you don't build models from scratch. You're generally using existing models that will then customize to your needs. Okay, time to add another code cell with the following code. Let's walk through some of these parameters. Model Maker provides several pre learned model embeddings that you can use, but the simplest and quickest to begin with is Average WordVec that you learned about before. So you shall use this once again here as shown. Next, you specify the number of words you want the model to use. Now you might think that the more the better, but there's generally a sweet spot based on the frequency that each word is used. If you use every word in the entire corpus, you could end up with the model trying to learn and balance out weights for words that are only used once, which is not very useful as they generally won't help you classify future sentences accurately. Also, choosing a smaller number here will lead to a smaller and faster model, but could be less accurate if too few words are used. So finding that sweet spot is key and it's up to you to experiment with this number to see what works best for your data. Next up is something that represents sequence length of the input sentence. This is the number of tokens that the model can accept as an input. Now, just like the model you used before, you'll keep this at 20 for now, but you could try and change this later if you wanted. Finally, in this section, you've got something called wordvec underscore dim, which stands for the number of word vector dimensions to use to try and separate words by. These dimensions are essentially the different characteristics learnt by the machine learning algorithm when training that any given word can be measured by, which the program will then try to use to best associate words that are similar in some meaningful way. The model can then use these dimensions to then enable it to detect words that are more likely associated with spam. Maybe spam emails are more likely to contain words that are both medical in nature and human body parts. So maybe it will discover that using two dimensions in this way is useful to separate data. And it should be noted that as a rule of thumb determined from research is that the fourth root of a number of words works very well for this dimensions parameter. So if I'm using 2000 words, a good starting point for this is seven dimensions. If you change the number of words used, you can also change this number. Okay, at this point, go ahead and execute the current cell of code and then continue. All right, we're almost there. Next, it's time to load the data from the CSV file that you downloaded earlier and use it as training data to the model using the data loader utilities you imported at the start. The first line here specifies a few parameters such as the file name, which column in the CSV file is the sentence to learn from. In this case, comment text is the name of the column used along with which column is the label, in which case the spam column is used. These names of the columns can be found on line one of the CSV file downloaded that explains the format of the CSV file. Next, you pass the spec variable you defined on the previous slide with all the configuration set and also the delimiter that the file uses. As this is a CSV file, a comma is used as the separator of columns. Lastly, you can set both shuffle and is training values to true so the data gets shuffled and is used for training. Once the data is loaded, you can then split the data into training and testing data sets using data.split and passing a value of 0.9. So 90% is reserved for training data and 10% for testing. Now go ahead and execute the code in this cell and then move on to the next step. Okay, at this point in time, it's time to actually build and train the model. Add a new code block with a line of code as shown. Here you call text underscore classifier dot create with three parameters. The first parameter, passes the training data to use, the second specifies the model specification, and the third is the number of epochs to train for. You can now execute the code in the current cell and wait for the model to train. You'll see the epoch data printed as it completes each of the 50 epochs, and if it all goes to plan, the loss should get lower and the accuracy higher over time. Great, now once the model is trained, the only thing left to do is to convert and download the model just like you did in prior chapters so you can use it in your JavaScript code. Let's go ahead and do that. Add one final code block to the colab as shown. Here you can call model.export with two parameters. The first parameter defines what directory to export to. Here it creates a JS export directory in the temp root folder, similar to what you've done before. The second parameter specifies the export format, which itself takes three parameters. The first specifies to use the TensorFlow.js format. The second says to also export the labels file and the third exports the vocab file. Finally, just like you've done before, you can call the zip utility on the command line. Note that this line starts with an exclamation point as it's not Python code. So you can download all the resulting files in one go. This resulting zip file will be called modelfiles.zip as shown. 
Once you've executed this code cell, go ahead and navigate to the temp folder and find the JS underscore export subfolder where you can then download the resulting zip file that was saved. So congratulations, you've just retrained the comment spam model with custom data. Often, you don't need to spend too much time using Python to get what you need and then go back to JavaScript and use such models in more familiar environments that you use as a web engineer. It should be noted that you could have used any CSV file with your own pairs of sentences and classification values here if you wanted. You could even retrain this model to detect things beyond just spam if you've got training data for it, such as what language a sentence is written in, for example. Now, in the final section of this chapter, you'll see how to upload these files to Glitch to then use on your website, completing a more robust version of the web app that you created in the prior section. See you there.